Tonight, we're going to be talking about uh, how to survive a narcissist. And most people here know what a narcissist is because um, a narcissist may have been our parents. A narcissist may have been our friends. It may have been our boyfriend, girlfriend, may have had a narcissistic husband. Uh, the story of narcissist or that term comes from Greek mythology of a man who uh, saw his own reflection and fell in love with it and has been adopted into uh, pop psychology uh, with an understanding of people who become overly into themselves or overly obsessed with themselves. They become selfish or self-centered. Uh, to the point of actually um, looking out for their own interests while actually neglecting the interests of others. And that's what we see in narcissists today. They are so absorbed with their own interests that they actually neglect the interests of those who are their own close family members. And this can be very confusing when uh, your, your parent exhibits these narcissistic traits because we have an understanding or a feeling about our parents like, okay, that's my mom or, or that's my dad. So they're supposed to love me. But then the way a narcissist relates to people and the, the way a narcissist relates to the outside world doesn't look to us like love and it doesn't feel to us like love. And this can cause significant damage uh, to a child that's raised by a parent who's narcissistic. Uh, children who have narcissistic parents end up having very low self-esteem and self-worth because the narcissistic parent is uh, not validating to the child. Narcissistic parents don't build their children up. Specifically uh, with mothers, narcissistic mothers tend to be very invalidating to their daughters. Now, how do you spot a narcissist? Because some of us grow up to want to have relationships, whether that's just with friends and family in the workplace, or we want to be able to have relationships that are romantic. Uh, we want to be able to have friendships. How do we actually develop the ability to spot a narcissist? Well, there's a few points, a few red flags you can look out for in order to know if someone is actually narcissistic, dangerous to you. And the number one thing you want to look for is a lack of empathy. If you notice that a person uh, would or should normally have a certain amount of, of empathy for others, um, specifically those who are close family members or those who are his children, but there's a lack of it. They show a lack of empathy potentially for animals, potentially for other people's children. Uh, when they look at entertainment and certain stories, they lack empathy for the protagonist or for people who are suffering. Uh, that lack of empathy could be a red flag. Uh, one of the hallmark traits of narcissistic personality disorder is that a person lacks empathy. That lack of empathy is your red flag. That's, that's, that's your signal to keep your guard up and keep your eyes peeled because this may be a narcissist. And that is probably one of the most core identifying marks of a narcissist. They don't feel sorry for other people. They don't feel sorry for you. They, they're not in tune to the emotions and the feelings of others. They find the emotions of others to be a drag, actually. Another red flag you can look for is the way they talk about themselves. So when they come home after a long day, if they just complain all the time and they're, they're telling you stories or even from their distant past, their stories, but the stories are always how everyone else is the bad guy, but they're the good guy. How everyone else is the villain, but they're the victim. How everyone else is wrong, but they're never wrong. They're always right. And story after story, you start to notice a pattern where they never really seem to make any mistakes, but everyone else seems to be the problem. They're always complaining. 
narcissists are always complaining about everybody else and what's wrong with everybody else and why they can't uh, get along and be happy with all these people. They would be able to do better, but all these people, they're always complaining. That, again, is a red flag. If you see someone who's constantly complaining like that and they never seem to, to, to have any self-reflection on their own uh, failings, on their own imperfections, that could be a narcissist. Also, you'll notice narcissists can't take responsibility. So when you're in a conflict with someone and you're pointing out to them, hey, you know, I, I didn't like what you did. I, I felt like you were wrong by doing this and that. And they can never just absorb that. They can never just say, yeah, you're right. You know, that wasn't right. It's like it, it just misses them. Instead, they're always recriminating. Back. Well, I did that for you. Well, you're the one who said, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you're telling me that, but but all the time you're doing this and, that, and they're always snapping it back and pulling it back and pushing it back on you, right? Every two minutes, anything that, anything you try to say, nothing sticks. They can never take responsibility. They can never live in the reality of their own mistakes. Narcissists have a very fragile ego. From the very their very inception, they went through complex trauma. But the way that they sought to survive emotionally, the low self-worth and the low self-esteem was to actually go into the darkness and become, in, in a sense, one with that darkness. You see, with the fragile self-esteem, they needed to create a false self and then live as this false self, which would be perfect. It would be total perfection. And so now if you try to crack or say anything wrong about that, that facade that they have, that false mask, that false self, then they feel like they cannot possibly accept that because this mask has to be perfect. Who they are to the world, how they project to the world needs to be absolutely perfect. So they cannot accept that type of criticism on themselves. If you had a narcissistic parent, uh, particularly moms, they, they tend to blame their children for their lack of success in, their, in life. So you would have heard a story growing up, something like, I would have been able to go to college, but then I got pregnant with you. And having to take care of two kids is not easy. So I had to stop and I had to go to work or I would have been able to do this. I would have been able to become a singer or a dancer or a writer or an actor. I was going to be something big. I was going to be something so great, but I gave that all up to be your mom. So by the way, you owe me for the rest of your life. And that's essentially the tune of a narcissistic parent. They're always... Uh, getting in the, the children's business, even when the children are older, they don't, they don't allow the children to have any privacy. They want their adult children to still be dependent on them. Uh, so it's like, you can't move that far away. You can't move that far from me. That's too far. I can't live without you. I need you. And they create this over-dependency that's, that's above and beyond uh, what, what is really appropriate for an adult child in their relationship. They might say, I sacrificed so much for you when you were a child. I came here on a ship across a, an ocean for you to have these opportunities. The least you could do is give me a little bit of money right now. They've always got some sort of guilt trip for their children and why their children owe them something. And so if you grew up with a narcissistic parent, they would have punished you for any unique thoughts or thinking differently than them. If you didn't think like them, if you didn't agree with them, then you would get punished, shamed, made to feel, uh, made to feel uh, like ostracized for having, for having a unique or different thought. Whereas healthy parents would have nurtured your critical thinking skills. Instead, the narcissistic parents want you to only believe and think like them because a narcissistic parent sees you as an extension of themselves. They, as a result, will continue to force ideas upon you and force ideals on you. 
many narcissistic mothers hold on to weird gender biases. Uh, like, well, as, as a woman, you need to be wearing a dress. You need to be dressed like this. And if you act like that, then you're a prostitute and, and you need to stay home until you get married and you need to, and she's got all of these gender roles that she wants you to play specifically when they suit her wishes and desires. And so they're trying to form you as especially mothers to their daughters into this ideal of, of a person that you're supposed to be. But if you don't fit into that ideal, that's just, it's going to be hell on earth for you. And so many narcissistic daughters, I mean, daughters of narcissistic parents uh, learn to just give in because it's a lot easier than standing up for themselves all the time and having to fight back. Uh, if you live with a narcissist, you have to be prepared for the smear campaigns. So the narcissist can't be content to just have a normal chill relationship with you. They must make sure that everyone in your life views them as superior to you. And so one of the ways they do that is by making you look as bad as possible so that they look better. And so they'll engage in a smear campaign. So they'll talk about you bad to their friends, to, to other family members. If you were a child of a narcissistic parent, uh, you heard your, your, your mom talking on the phone, exaggerating how misbehaved you were, exaggerating uh, to her spouse uh, what a headache you were and, and how hard it was raising you. If you have a narcissistic spouse, your narcissistic spouse will go and tell and talk badly about you. Uh, to all of his friends and, and his relatives to try to make it seem like uh, you're a real burden on him. Um, my narcissistic wife, uh, my ex-wife used to um, do a thing where she would play a professional victim. So she would go uh, to her friends and then when she was around them, she would just start crying. And then the friends go, what's wrong? And she's just... Nothing, nothing. <laughs> and the friends are like, oh, my God, you know, what's wrong? What's wrong? And she, it's Roman. There's something wrong with them. And the whole idea is to create this concept that there's something wrong with her husband. And, and she's just the victim who has to deal with this terrible spouse. And meanwhile, her husband is at home watching Netflix, unaware that on the other side of town, she's creating like a, a false marital issue to try to really make it seem like she's a victim. The smear campaign is essential to narcissists. Uh, they'll try to convince other people that you are the problem, uh, but they don't stop there. They will also try to convince you that you are the problem. And so they'll say, well, you know, so-and-so said you're really a problem. And then they'll try to tell you, you know, you did this and you do that. And they want you to actually believe that the things that you think are not real, your reality is not real. Only their reality is what's real. And so to do this, they will actually use gaslighting, which is to deny you your reality and to convince you um, that there's something wrong with your thinking or that you're actually sick uh, to try to induce you to believe you're mentally ill. And, and narcissists are notorious uh, for making people think that there's something wrong with them when there's really not, they will go as far as to hide keys and, and play extremely petty games uh, to convince someone that, that there's something wrong when there really is not. So that you will actually start to doubt your reality and you'll become increasingly dependent on them. And that is ultimately what they desire. Uh, daughters of narcissistic mothers um, often become withdrawn and, and shy about saying anything. Uh, they don't get to make decisions growing up because all decisions are made for them. Uh, so when they become adults, they feel uh, inept to be able to make some of their own decisions because growing up, all of their decisions were always made for them. They, they really had no say in the house. And so they may struggle even to know what they want. Uh, they may have been criticized for having opinions or needs. And so they learn to actually disregard their own emotions, disregard their own needs automatically. 
so now they feel then like they they need other people's approval in order to proceed in life in order to make decisions uh they learn to interpret body language and they become super attuned to reading facial expressions because they learn that if that narcissistic mother or father became angry or upset it was going to be very dangerous for them so uh they they didn't know when it was coming they didn't know why so they just learned to like they try to like mind read almost and so as a result later in their relationships they're reading every facial expression and getting hypersensitive and and and, and afraid that their spouse is going to snap and, and they can't handle the anger of their spouse, even though anger is a normal human emotion that's very scary for someone who grew up with narcissistic parents because their nar- narcissism rage, narcissistic rage is a whole nother type of anger. And so that's something that uh, they're afraid that they may have to deal with and they don't want to ever face that again. As an, uh, as an adult, they may become to the point where they're basically paranoid, anticipating the next danger. And it becomes so hard for a, a adult child of narcissistic parents to trust anyone that they feel turned off altogether to relationships because they've been hurt so much as a child and manipulated so much by their parents. Many times in life, uh, as an uh, as an adult of narcissistic parents, that narcissistic mom still keeps a front seat to your life and still wants to be involved in your decisions and 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 have commentary to everything from how you're raising your children to your relationship with your spouse. Uh, For, for many, it becomes difficult for them to even maintain a relationship with their spouse because of their mother's involvement. And for some, um, they end up finding narcissistic spouses or, or other spouses that have abusive qualities and traits that they used to see from their mom or dad growing up. And they look for those same traits in a husband. And for many sons, they look for those traits in a wife. So if you're continuing to feel disrespected by your narcissistic parents, if you're in a relationship with your mom that's negatively impacting other relationships in your life, if your narcissistic mother uses sensitive information against you, if you feel smothered and overwhelmed by your mother, if you feel a constant sense of dread and angst because of your mother, and you continue to tolerate emotional abuse, you may need to put up your defensive mechanisms. So what I'm going to talk to you about is how you can actually put your guards up and your defenses up so that you can protect your metaphysical health, that is your mental and emotional health, when you have a narcissistic family member. It's so important that you prioritize your metaphysical health. For many children of narcissistic parents, they live at home with the narcissistic mother, father, or both, but they fail to get out of their clutches. Narcissistic parents know exactly what they're doing to ensnare their children. They set up situations where their children are perpetually owing them money, having to pay to live with them. Um, they're guilting them into giving them money, or they may actually have their children work for them. And the situations that they set up is such a power imbalance that it becomes difficult for the kid to ever be able to get out of that situation. And for many of us, it was that we moved back home to live with our narcissistic parents. And so how can we manage this, this, this type of dynamic if this fits our situation and, and we're living at home with narcissistic parents? Well, try to, keep, try to understand that if you're living with your narcissistic parents, you're living with people that will prey on you and leech off of you. They are parasites. Um, they do not care about your metaphysical health. 
I repeat, your narcissistic parents do not care about your metaphysical health. They are toxic, which means that they are poisonous. I know that they're your mom and dad, but they are poisonous to you. So staying around them and being around them means that you're exposing yourself to toxins, energy toxins. They are bad energy. So it will actually produce in you a mental or emotional dysregulation. They are telling you information that's not true about yourself and about them, where they are perfect and you are a problem or always an issue or to blame for uh, where, where they lost their jewelry or uh, what happened with some random situation. There's always some catastrophe that you're either directly to blame for or someone else is to blame for. All of that is toxic. And they are asking you to buy into that. Just by being around them, you are in a toxic environment. The best thing that you can do is get out of that toxic environment. So many times we're there because financially it's, it's of benefit for us to be there. Please don't prioritize your finances over your metaphysical health because it doesn't do any good if you've saved up $10,000, $20,000, but now you're in a psychiatric ward or you're on medications that you wouldn't need to be on or you're suffering from depression, anxiety that can become so uh, deadly to the body that it produces other health situations. The cortisol in your body, which is what gets released when you have too much um, anxiety, cortisol causes you to gain weight and it causes a ton of other health complications. So you are basically fortifying the opportunity to get into poor physical, mental, and emotional health by staying in that household. The longer you stay, the higher your risk factor goes. So I've seen uh, some of my clients who have stayed in the house with narcissistic parents eventually uh, get injured at work because they were so distracted uh, with all of the stress that they were under. Uh, that they made mistakes. Uh, one, one person made a work mistake that nearly costed her her job. Uh, and then you know what's going to happen if you lose your job. Now you're more dependent on them. When you get physically ill or physically hurt, now you're more dependent on them. When, you have a, when you're diagnosed with a mental illness, then you're more dependent on them. So understand, this is they are happy, more than happy to see you energy-wise, metaphysically go down and become increasingly dependent on them. So your number one defense against narcissistic parents is to get away from them. Get away. If you're over 18, get away from them. But in some cases, people still have to live with their narcissistic parents, or they may have a spouse that's narcissistic. And so they don't have a way to actually escape. So if you absolutely cannot escape, here are some techniques you can use um, to be able to maintain as much metaphysical health as possible. It's not as good as getting away, but this will have to do for now. Low contact. Low contact is not the same as no contact because no contact is ideal but sometimes low contact is the only thing that's possible in a given situation. So with low contact, you will actually make sure that you don't initiate any contact that is unnecessary in any way, shape, or form. You're only going to contact them or speak to them if you are specifically called upon to speak to them, if you absolutely have to speak to them. So even if you're a minor in a home, you can go by a low contact to your narcissistic parents. You can remain respectful of their position, but keep it low contact as in you're not initiating and engaging in social interactions. You must recognize that you are not able to trust 
your narcissistic parents with your emotions. And so you have to cut off your emotional um, contact with them. You have to cut off your them as a source of emotional needs and providing your emotional needs for you. Meaning you will no longer go to your narcissistic parents or your narcissistic spouse as a source of love. This is very important. You no longer go to narcissistic parents or a narcissistic spouse as a source of love. You can love them if you want, but you cannot look for love from them because if you do that, that would be like going under the sink to grab yourself some refreshments and that's where you keep all the chemicals. You'll get hurt bad if you look for love from a narcissist. Because they cannot love you in a healthy way. If your mother is emotionally immature, she cannot provide for your emotional needs. So it doesn't matter how much you hug her, love her, cry, or ask her to be that, Mom, I just need you to be here for me this one time. This one time. This is my wedding day. I just need you to be here. She can't do it. She cannot just be decent. So I'm saving you the heartache and the pain of trying to get her to just have this good mother-daughter moment with you. Stop. She can't do it. She can only make it about herself. Let it go. Seek love and validation from sources that are safe. You can seek love from people that are safe. You can make emotional connections to other people. You cannot continue to go to an emotionally immature person and hope that they're going to provide for your emotional needs. How? She has the emotional maturity of an eight-year-old. How can an eight-year-old provide for your emotional needs? Granted, she wanted you to provide for hers when she was eight, but recognize Recognize what toxic is and separate yourself. How? By no longer going to them to seek love. They're not a source of consistent love. So go low contact. You can also use the rule of gray rocking. If you're living in the house with a narcissist, gray rocking means that you will cut off all emotions from the narcissist which means you will never show any emotion. So you will always respond just with a straight face. And no matter what they say, no matter how much they yell, no matter how crazy they get, you do not get emotion. No matter what they blame you of, what they accuse you of, you do not show emotion. This is very important because a narcissist feeds off of your emotional reaction. If you do not have an emotional reaction, the narcissist cannot feed on you. And they have to move on to something else as some sort of supply. So use gray rocking to protect yourself. When you gray rock, they can't manipulate your emotions. When you're gray rocking, they can't go in and see what you're thinking, see how you're feeling and play with that. They can't use your emotions against you. They can't accuse you of saying or doing or acting in some way wrong. So gray rock a narcissist. That means be like a stone like a gray rock. You can answer questions that you are asked, but you don't show any emotion about any situation. They will try to provoke you, but you don't allow them to provoke you. This minimizes the amount of emotional interaction, thus emotional toxicity and emotional abuse that the narcissist can heap on you. This is a very important self-protective maneuver to allow you to survive living in the house with a narcissist. Whether it's your parents and you're a minor or it's your spouse, you have to go no info with your narcissist. That means you don't tell them any information. As hard as it is, as painful as it is, as much as you guys used to talk, understand that they use information against you. Remember those smear campaigns? Anything they know about you, they use it to make you look bad. They use information to make you look bad. They also use your information to make you feel bad. They're always picking and becoming a detective into your personal life. 
Do not share any more information with them. Nothing. Not where you were at, what you were doing, why you were doing it, who you were with. Do not give narcissists, parents or spouses, any information beyond what is absolute, what you deem absolutely bare minimum necessary. Because they will use it against you. It's very important that you set boundaries with, with your narcissistic parents or, or a narcissistic spouse. That means that you're going to say no often. Your old policy of just giving in that is capitulating to their demands doesn't work. That old policy, it seemed like you were keeping the peace, but all you were really saying is, hey, bullying me works. Keep pressuring me and I'll give in. If you don't like being pressured, then apply back the equal force. No, it's just a no. Hey, you know, I'm going to need you to clean out the garage. I'm not going to do that. That's your garage. That's not my garage. I'm not going to clean it, uh, clean your garage. I need you to take me to the, you're going to have to find someone else. I, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, they're going to guilt you and do all that stuff. But that little bit of guilt that you're fearing is way better, way easier than dealing with a lifetime of depression and anxiety. Anxiety comes from being too nice. Anxiety is exacerbated by being too nice. You talk to people who are very blunt with their feelings, thoughts, and emotions, and you are talking to people who have very little anxiety. Those people who are right out there with how they feel, and they say no, they set real strong boundaries. You might even think, boy, that person is a little bold and a little unlikable. But guess what? They take all that unlikableness and they chill. They sleep peacefully. They wake up peacefully. They have zero anxiety. Why? Because they don't try to be nice. They're real. And as a result, people have no choice but to accept them for who they are. So anyone in their life accepts them for being authentic. You need a little more of that. You learned as a kid, don't be authentic. Just be nice. Just do whatever your parents say. Throw that out now. If you're a grown up, stop being so nice. It's not gaining and garnering respect from people. You don't need to be so nice. Be real. Be honest with folks. Just tell people. I know it sounds really scary to tell people the truth, but just try it. Start small. Start small. Hey, do you like my shirt? Ah, I'd be lying if I said I did. Just tell them the truth. <laughs> and you will start to respect yourself. They will start to respect you. You will have more authentic relationships and you will have less anxiety. Just try it. I know it sounds scary, but just try it. I, I, I wouldn't sit here and waste your time if it didn't work. It works. It leads to metaphysical health, to live in the realm of truth, to be authentic, to be who you really are, to be yourself. That's, what, that's how you become self-actualized, to be your actual self. So say no, set boundaries, be yourself, don't be nice, keep your emotions locked in right here. Don't be afraid to pick a hill, take a stand and, and ride out their, their temper tantrums. Sometimes people feel so afraid of what the reaction of their narcissist is going to be that they're like, oh man, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want to say no. I don't want to confront them. I don't want to see, let it play out. Let them go through the whole thing. What is your worst fear? You're a grown up. If you're an adult, you're paying your own bills. What is your worst fear? Well, my mom's going to disown me. Right. I said, what's a bad thing that could happen? Your mom disowning you is one of the best things that could happen to you. If she's a narcissist, <laughs> do you know how many times my mom has disowned me? <laughs> that's, that's, that happens like every year. You know what I'm saying? Like any conversation she wants to get, get in with me, I stand my ground. No, 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 no. And then you're a terrible son. I never want to talk to you again. Blah, that's what they do. They tear down everything. It's rule or ruin. I got to tear you down 
if I can't rule you. That's the best news you could get when you get that text message that says you're out of the family. It's like, oh, yes. Awesome. That's good news. Don't be afraid of that. That'll be the best year of your life. The longer they can keep that going, the better. Because then you can have peace, metaphysical health. All of your ideas about, well, well, that's my mom. That's a title. Narcissists love entitlement. They've been teaching you that, brainwashing you with that your entire life. I'm your mom. Don't worry about that. That's a title. Look at it like this. If that person did not have that title, would you still associate with them? Absolutely not. You would cut them off. So speaking of cutting things off, that's it for my time for tonight. We appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. And, and we'll see you guys on Wednesday for a very exciting discussion.